Hello, welcome to the Citrus Garden. If you're new here, my name is Christina. If you're not new here, hi, welcome back. It's great to see you. This is a general collective reading. There are no signs attached to it, so only take it if it resonates with it with you within the first couple of minutes. Otherwise, find a different video to watch. Don't take on energy that is not yours. Um, so this is my third attempt at trying to record this video. I'm struggling with the message a little bit, I will be honest um, about that. Um, because I feel like there's somebody here who's actually going through kind of like um, a difficult energy. Um, it's coming through as like rejection, like someone who is going through some sort of rejection. Um, and so I'm trying to be as kind about this as I can. Um, trying not to trigger anybody. Uh, I know that that's not within my control, but I can sort of like say it in the most loving way possible. So that's the intention behind this video. Um, but it's about this reading, I should say, like the cards that are coming out. So I'm just putting that out there at the beginning, just in case anybody is dealing with that kind of energy and doesn't want to, um, I'm just, I'm just going to speak freely. So <laughs> bottom of the deck energy, you have here the Empress and the King of Swords. I feel like this is one person's energy. I feel like there's an energy here who's in the Three of Swords. So it it's coming through in a couple of different ways. There are two there are almost like two signals that I'm receiving. One feels like a past energy where it's like somebody has rejected this three of swords. This Empress energy has rejected the three of swords um, is how that's coming through to me. And it's kind of like one story that I'm getting in this, in this reading is that Whoever's in the Three of Swords has been, um, is perhaps like having trouble working through that is how it's coming through. Um, because it's kind of like the metaphor that I was receiving. Again, I'm not making light of the situation. I understand the Three of Swords is a very difficult energy. But it's kind of like the way that the metaphor that was coming through to me in order to bring some lightness into the heaviness that this person is going through is that this person is sort of like blasting the song Baby One More Time by Britney Spears on repeat. I've been hearing that song for three days now. It's It's been sort of like... Um, no matter what I do to try and uh, focus on a different energy, it's kind of just like I've been I've been bombarded with this song for the last three days um, from a Three of Swords energy. I don't know who this is, uh, but it's kind of like so. There's kind of like here a need for boundaries uh, energetically energetic boundaries. You also have here the Laum coming out at the bottom of the deck, which is talking about, it's, it was actually coming through with a different energy today than it normally does, kind of like in a reverse position of the Laum, which talks about like somebody who um, only wants to receive, like has, has restrictions on who they receive from. So it's like there's somebody here who's like, um, who only wants to receive from a particular person perhaps, right? Like this is kind of like this three of swords, whoever this person is only wants to receive from this empress. And so they're blasting them with this um, energy of like feeling regret it actually is coming through as like somebody who's feeling regretful about something that they did or like they caused some sort of loss or something like that right so it, it could be a breakup but it doesn't have to be that exactly but that's sort of um a metaphor for the energy that's coming through today 
Anyways, that's the overall context. The first two cards that we have here is the death card and the octopus. So some sort of ending and transition. Um, the octopus talks about somebody who's very empathic. Uh, but because of that, like people who ha are very empathic need to have very strong boundaries in terms of like who they're giving to, right? Especially with the lamb coming out, this can talk about like if you're giving too much to a situation, it can leave you feeling drained. If you're not giving enough to a situation, it can leave you feeling constipated, emotionally, spiritually, that kind of thing. Um, so it's kind of coming through as being like, there's maybe somebody who um, is feeling drained from a situation. And so at this death card, I sometimes see as being sort of like having to take a step back uh, or like having to almost like put like a boundary up in order to um, get some space from a situation is how that's coming through. Uh, especially because the next card coming out here is the Luathas the Wild. So normally I love this card because I do have like, it is fiery. It is a fiery energy, um, which is not always a bad thing. So the, the positive aspects of Luathas the Wild is that they uh, are like a energy source, right? They give you energy. Um, so again, this does feel like I'm seeing like two different ways to describe this situation. There's one situation maybe, you may be dealing with two situations that are mirroring each other, but one's a shadow, one's a light aspect, if that makes sense. So the light aspect of Luathas the Wild is that they give you energy, right? They, um, they're a battery pack. They uh, are very creative, um, very motivating, that kind of thing. The shadow aspect of Luathas the Wild is that um, they can be destructive or that they can be impulsive or hasty or um, especially if it's coming from a Three of Swords place, right? They could be sort of like full blast in terms of like, uh, blasting you with a song on repeat for three days, right? Like that kind of thing. Um, that could be a shadow aspect of Luathas the Wild. So I don't know, you may be dealing with a situation that has two, or like you may be dealing two situations, I should say, because the energy that was coming through underneath the octopus and the death card. So the magician, first of all, you have here is the first card out. I see this as being sort of like trying to manifest something, trying to manifest something. Um, and what's trying to be manifested is the King of Pentacles and the Lover's card. So this King of Pentacles is really interesting. It was coming through with this energy of like um, somebody who is, the way that it was coming through is, um, <laughs> um, okay, I have to describe it like this. So the death card is coming through with this energy. Like I've been, I've been, I've been knitting a lot. So I'm knitting a sweater right now currently. Um, and in the patterns, just one of the things that I've noticed that I think is like a really interesting term is the term positive ease, um, which just describes, if you think about like a sweater, how much room you have in the sweater, right? How much room to breathe that you have, which is described as positive ease. So the, the sweater pattern will tell you this sweater has is meant to be made with this much positive ease, this much space to breathe. So I'm seeing it kind of like this. So maybe there's someone here trying to manifest some sort of relationship here with the King of Pentacles and the Lovers with um, 
enough space to breathe, especially here with the King of Pentacles, where it's like at like this one sort of at a distance, I always see, but it's kind of coming through today as being more so like um, giving enough space to breathe, giving enough like positive ease. It is coming through with ease, like um, that kind of energy, like it's easy. It's easy, it's easy with this one. It's, something's very easy with whoever this energy is. With the lover's card, right before I did this reading, I just took my dog on a walk and there was like this little robin sitting on the path. And um, I thought it was injured, but it wasn't because it did fly away when we passed, right? It gave space as we passed. And then as soon as we passed, it went back into that spot. It was such a strange encounter. I've never had like a encounter with a robin like that before. But anyways, it's just coming through with like enough space, like appropriate space. And I feel like though there's kind of like, so that's the light aspect. What you are trying to manifest is kind of how that's coming through. There's this sort of like shadow aspect though that I'm seeing that you may be dealing with or perhaps from the past you have dealt with that is like being cleaned up or something like that. Um, where it's coming through is like the next card being sort of like the lizard. So this card talks about being dr being drained by something or like needing to be recharged, right? Like um, perhaps feeling depleted energetically from excuse me, from some sort of situation or past relationship or whatever this is, because it's coming out here with the Seven of Swords and the King of Cups. Um, so it, again, this is coming through as being sort of like two different situations. One is presenting as sort of the shadow aspect where there's no room to breathe. The other is coming through as being a light aspect where there's like, it's, it's the lovers. So it's like, whatever this energy is, um, it is coming through as being very draining just because it, so first of all, the seven of swords, my least favorite card probably in this deck is this card. Um, because it talks about holding on to something that does not belong to you. So it's kind of like um, this, this person, it kind of feels like they're trying to claim something of yours or trying to claim you as theirs in some way. Um, it's kind of, especially because it's coming out here with the, uh, the swan which is really interesting with sort of like this, like this shape here in the background being, okay, anyway, so it's coming out with the swan because I feel like there's something here about like whoever this person was from the past, um, actually, f I think that they feel that they uh, are a reflection to you with the swan. They, they, they think that they are a reflection to you. But how I'm seeing this, especially because it's coming out like this, you have water, fire, and water again. And especially with this King of Cups, it's coming through as being sort of like, they're actually trying to claim your water, your emotions. They're, um, it feels kind of like they're trying, it's almost like, I don't know if this is the intention that they have, but it feels like um, the way that they're holding onto your energy is draining yours in some way. And that's why the, the need for boundaries are really important, especially with like all of this fire energy coming through where it's like all of your water is being dried up by whoever this is. Um, because they're coming, they're like, there's not enough breathing room. I actually feel like they're trying to claim something of yours and it could be your, 
emotions or like your attention or whatever that is, especially with the King of Cups, shadow aspects of the King of Cups can be very emotionally manipulative. Like, especially if it's something like with the Three of Swords, like trying to present some sort of heartbreak to you on repeat over and over again so that you will turn towards them. That's that's some sort of emotional ma manipulation, especially if you've already ended the situation. We're, we are starting with the death card. I feel like this is something from the past where it's like um, the situation feels like it's over, but it's kind of like this one is refusing to let go in a way that might be draining you or like because especially with the magician here i'm seeing this as being sort of like like um you're taking your energy and moving it somewhere else is how it's coming through like tr try and change focus trying to change the station so you're not always listening to the same song but it's like this one is like regardless of which station you're tuned in blasting it blasting britney spears on full blast anyways you have here the page of cups coming out next i feel like this is talking about so this page of cups is a very um earthy energy where it's like it talks about grounding your emotional energy or like finding small things to focus on that bring you joy and happiness like it's a card that talks about appreciating the simple pleasures of life in general so I feel like that perhaps is um okay i what somebody is focusing on, like trying to focus on um, the goodness or like trying not to focus on whoever this King of Cups energy is. But good news is if you are sort of resonating in this Page of Cups energy, which I feel like most people probably would, um, it feels like there's something here about like your, whatever it is that you're trying to manifest here with the, the um, magician, king of pentacles and the lovers, like that's ahead for you. That's ahead for you. Um, because you do have here the fairy guide, which talks about sort of like, and the singer of intuition, which, which talks about, um, receiving guidance receiving guidance or information about something but i feel like there's something here about like um there may be somebody assisting you because again the the light aspects of luathas the wild is a positive energy source right like gets you motivated very encouraging very creational like um full blast in a positive way where it's like they're especially because it was coming through with the lizard where it's like trying to get you motivated trying to recharge your battery um that kind of thing i feel like there's somebody who's helping you do that they're coming out here with the camel and the owl i feel like though you may not be necessarily seeing them in your physical environment, but it's like they're energetically or spiritually or however, astrally, whatever word you want to put on that, are sending you positive energy. Um, this camel here talks about like somebody who is very self-reliant in terms of their emotional state. So it does feel like the light aspects where I feel like this king of cups is not that especially if they're trying to manipulate you in some way emotionally they're um does not feel like they are self-reliant in terms of their emotional state like can't deal with their emotions by themselves 
are perhaps codependent on you in some way. Um, I don't, I don't even, okay. Anyways, we're going to move on from that. So <laughs> the camel here though, is sort of like this energy of temperance, right? It's mastery. The ma it's mastery of fire and water because I feel like you're, d there's a situ, those are the first three cards that came out, right? You had, um, water, fire, water. So this one here ha is already masterful at water and fire energy. So emotions and actions, how they take action on their emotions in some way, extremely resilient as well. I feel like because it's coming out underneath or on top of the three of pentacles, it's kind of like they're helping you to um, build a wall is how that's coming through. Helping you to build a wall uh, in terms of like, or build a boundary or um, build a solid foundation, that kind of thing. Um, it does feel like, cause I sometimes see this as being with the three of pentacles, like a boundary. Cause it, it is coming through with like a wall or bricks. So I do, I feel like this one is assisting in some way, perhaps like energetically or spiritually, especially in terms of like, cause you have here the fool card. This card sometimes talks to me about like, um, two paths. Right? One leads to the alligator, the other is the flower. The end of the end of this cycle is kind of how it's coming through. So I feel like your intuition will be leading you towards um, the new thing. I feel like there's also this energy here, the last couple of cards. You have here the four of swords and the tower card which to me is actually just looking like, so whoever or whatever the situation is that's holding on to you too tightly is there, like that's coming to an end. I feel like here at the Four of Swords, it's just trying to get you to like be peaceful about it. I feel like there's that energy as well with the Iris of the Rainbows because this card talks about hope, the sun coming out after a storm that there is sort of peace to be had um, after this tower moment passes because it is it's like they're holding on to something that's like in the midst of falling it's not it's not um, it's already over I feel like <sighs> okay and then you have here the temperance card which I love so much um, because this card talks about letting go to me, like in order to, in order to receive something new, you have to let go of something from the past. So I feel like that's sort of like the energy of like just peacefully letting go of something. And with the three of wands to end it, sorry, I know the focusing on the camera is really off today. Um, it's really dark. Anyways, this card talks about, so I'm just seeing this as being sort of like the end result of this King of Cups, where it's like, getting your energy back in a way where it's like, you can look forward to your manifestations and you can leave whatever this energy is behind in the past. Because I feel like there's an energy here of like somebody's holding on to your energy or your emotions or something like that. There's some sort of like energetic cord that they're holding on to. And it's like that that cord is being broken. That tie, that tower, it's like a, it's causing a tower moment for them actually is kind of how it's coming through because they refuse to let go. And so it's kind of like, be patient as this happens, because it's like the, the more that they hold on, the more that this energy um, breaks apart for them. 
So, three of wands. Three of wands. Moving, um, moving forward. Looking forward. Like, having a wholeness and completeness of whatever it is that um, you're trying to manifest. Like, looking forward to the future. I'm going to leave it there. If this reading resonated with you, please like, subscribe, or leave a comment down below. It helps so much. Thank you for sharing your energy with me, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.